Here we are at the beautiful Summersby Falls on the central coast of New South Wales. Hi, I'm Ken Duncan and I'm here today to give you some tips on how to shoot waterfalls. Now the tips that we're talking about here apply to any waterfall. Now one of the first things to do is make sure you're there usually in overcast light. Because the trouble is with waterfalls, if you have a lot of dappled light or harsh light, it's very hard to hold together. So overcast light is a really good thing to have. So if you are going to shoot a waterfall, it's good to think about the weather conditions that you're going to be dealing with. So look, get a forecast if you can, because you do, uh, you know, after rain is probably one of the best times to get there so the waterfalls will be really pumping. Another important thing is to get there early because with a lot of waterfalls, if you're not there early, you're going to have a lot of people in your shot. So be the first one there so you get prime position. So when you get to the location, before you unpack all your gear, it's a good idea to look around to see what elements you can use to really give the image depth. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is you can just shoot the waterfall and it can be just looking boring or look like a just a normal tourist shot. You've got to try and find elements to connect the shot to the waterfall. For example, here we've got some really beautiful reflections or some smoothish water in the foreground. So that's something that I can use. Also, we have a tree. We've got some angles and arches, so we could use that. And using these elements helps create a third dimension to your picture which makes the picture more engaging for the end user. So we've got to the scene and now we've got to think, what are we wanting to do? And you've got to think, when you're taking photographs, it's like a triangle. You've got three different elements that you've got to sort of think about. You've got ISO, which is the sensitivity of the sensor that you're setting. You've got aperture, which is the diaphragm in the lens to open or let more or less light in. And then you've got shutter speed, which is the duration of the exposure. The speed we're looking for here is about one second. So to get that, we have to really knock the ISO right back because we want to um, use it at its lowest setting. So we've set the ISO low. We've got the um, aperture at a, a large number, like 11 or 8 or 16. And then the next minute, we've got one second. Now, if we can't get it low enough to get that one second, there is another thing we can do. We can have a neutral density filter and you can get a neutral density filter which will uh, slow it down again. So generally, in a situation like this, I like to shoot on manual because the waterfall's not going anywhere in a hurry. So you've got the time to sort of sort things out. And then once you've got the settings right, it's, you know it's gonna always be the same. Also, I would often use manual focus on this situation. And then if I want to do multiple shots, later on I can stitch them together because they'll all be the same exposures. Now, the other thing is this, that if you are wanting to do stitching, remember that you need to shoot it in raw format so that all the shots will be, you can adjust them all to have the same color temperature. So we're using a slow shutter speed so basically what we need to really do here is have a tripod because at one second you're definitely going to get blurs. Now if you don't have a tripod you can put it on a rock or something like that. It's also good to have a cable release. I like having a cable release. Now if you don't have a cable release you can put it on the, uh, the timer and you can adjust the timer say something like two seconds and so that'll give it time to stabilise when you push the button. So here we are, we've got the camera set low so that we can get that reflection, so we're ready to take the shot.
So the light's getting a little bit contrasty now. You're getting that really hot spots there. So I think it's time to pack up and head on home and look at our pictures. So thank you for joining me on my photo tips on waterfalls. I hope it helps you take better shots. Panasonic.